can turn the world on with her smile Who can take a nothing day And suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to waste it You can have the time, why don't you take it You're gonna make it after all You're gonna make it after all It's not my business, but, uh... It's a little early to be drinking scotch, right? Right. <laughs> but I'm not drinking it. I have a toothache. And a dentist, a man with a degree, instructed me to take some scotch and hold it on my tooth. That is not drinking scotch. This is drinking scotch. <laughs> uh, Lou, I'm glad I caught you before you left. Wait a I'm... minute. I'm not finished. You ask me a question, I'm giving you an answer. Notice the difference now. This is not drinking scotch at 9 o'clock in the morning. See, I'm holding it on my tooth to reduce the pain. How can you do that and talk? I must have swallowed it. I gotta get to the dentist. Uh, Lou, I gotta ask you something. Anything you have to ask, ask Mary. Whatever she says goes. When I'm not here, she's in charge. And I'm going to the best dental appointment in my life. Hi. Hi, Gus. Come on, will you, Ted? Trying to make up my mind. Look, if you want in on the football pool, you got to do it now. There are only two squares left. Oh, oh, no, please, not the football pool. Guys, I've got work to do. Okay, I'm in. How much? 50 cents apiece. I'll take one. Ted, it's a lousy 50 cents. Go crazy. Take both of them. <laughs> You're talking a whole dollar, Murr. It only takes one square to win. Luck for your lady tonight, Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> Meeny, meeny, miny, mo, William, William, Trimble, Toe. Wire, wire, limber lock. Three geese in a flock. One flew east, one flew west, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> My mother told me, oh, you teach me to fly, you do fish rag, you. I'll take this one. It's about time. <laughs> I only did that to get your goat, Mary. Did I get your goat? Yes, Ted, you got my goat. <laughs> I got her goat, Mary. <laughs> oh, Ted, wait a minute. You've got a public service spot. Let me give you the copy. Uh, what is it this time? TBVD what? It's the Big Sisters Association for Juvenile Delinquents. Sorry, Mary, I only do diseases. <laughs> it's a very worthy cause. It's helped a lot of troubled kids. It's not going to kill you to donate a little free time. Oh, yeah? And what are you doing? I don't see you donating any time. I'm producing the spot. Oh, big deal. Big contribution. If you really thought it was worthwhile, you'd be out in the streets helping those kids. Well, Ted, as a matter of fact, I've been thinking seriously about getting a little sister. Thinking seriously, Mayor? Yeah. Well, now, I've been thinking seriously about becoming a plastic surgeon. <laughs> so that I can help tattooed people start a new life. <laughs> you know something, you're right. I'm gonna stop talking about it, and I'm gonna start doing something about it. I'm gonna call the big sisters today. You are? Because of what I said, I talked you into it? Yes, Ted. Gee, you have no idea what that means to me. I mean, I, nobody ever listens to me. Sometimes when I say something in a room, nobody listens. But it's all changed now. You have no idea how, how good that makes me feel, Murray. What? <laughs> Nothing. Look, are you really serious about this big sister thing? Yeah, why? Well, not that you wouldn't be a good influence on the kids. It's just that taking in a juvenile delinquent might be a lot to handle. I know. But, Mary, these girls have been around. You don't know what kind of trouble they've been in. I mean, some of these girls may have uh, dated heavily. <laughs> what are you trying to say? That I, I haven't lived enough? That I'm too naive to be a big sister? Well, let's face it, Mary. You are not what I would call an experienced woman. <laughs> Mary! You have no idea how experienced or inexperienced I am. I mean, sure, true, I'm not what you'd call a wild woman, but I'm hardly innocent. <laughs> I've been around.
around. Well, all right, I might not have been around, but I've been nearby. Okay, Mayor. I just wanted you to know what you were getting into. Hi, Mary. Hi, Murray. Hi, Doc. Hey, guys, we gotta get moving on this helicopter deal. I mean, holy cow. If we don't buy that baby soon, we're gonna miss out on a bargain of the century. Yeah, yeah, Gus, we got your memo about it. When I was directed for Channel 6, having our own helicopter was the greatest. I mean, for forest fires, floods, tornadoes. Without aerial shots, those things are a disaster. <laughs> they really think it's a good deal, huh? Are you kidding? Holy smoke. Helicopters sell for 150000 We can get this one for ninety-five. Hello, I'd like to talk to somebody about the Big Sisters program. I just want to know, don't you think it's a good idea to get a helicopter? Hello, my name Mary, is... Mary, in a few years, it'll just... pay for itself. What is it, Gus? Do you agree about the helicopter? Yes, certainly we should have a helicopter. Terrific! Hello, my name is Mary Richards, and I'd like to talk to somebody about getting a little sister. Right. Listen, uh, I think I should mention that I haven't had a whole lot of experience in this area, and I was sort of wondering if, if you had a girl... Who hasn't done, uh... <laughs> well, a girl, you know, who hasn't been... Listen, w would you have a girl who's just sort of cranky? <laughs> greatest news in the world. I have just been nominated Twin Cities TV Woman of the Year. What year? <laughs> I have to send them a resume and I was hoping someone would type it for me. Oh, come on, Sue Ann, you can type. Oh, I know, but it's so difficult with these fantastically long nails. <laughs> Gee, I always thought they were retractable. <laughs> I don't suppose you could help me. Oh, come on, Sue Ann. I have to get the story oh. finished. Oh, at least. Look it over, couldn't you? I mean, after all, you're a writer. You have a way with words. You have such a facile command of the language. You really know how to sling it. Uh, let's see. Uh, celebrity chairman of the Junior Red Cross. Volunteered 120 hours to the Baptist Youth Fellowship. Hey, I didn't know you did that. Neither did the Baptists. <laughs> see, what other unselfish things have I done to aid mankind? Uh, did you include the time the Shriners were in town? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna let that remark go now. It may hurt you very deeply later. <laughs> Oh, Mary, I am so sorry. I don't know how they could have passed you over. Maybe another year. Uh, Sue Ann has been nominated for TV Woman of the Year. And you weren't. <laughs> Congratulations, Sue Ann. Are you bitter? No. Oh. So, uh, how did things work out at Big Sisters? Terrific. They put you through a kind of screening process, and uh, I guess I passed because I've got a little sister. Oh, what's she like? Well, we were just sort of introduced. We didn't get a chance to talk too much, but she's 15, bright, cute as a button, and out on probation for shoplifting. <laughs> what was the name of this group, Mary? The Big Sisters. Big Sisters? That would be the perfect thing for me to do to clinch the award. And I'd be wonderful at it. I had an ideal relationship with my own sister. And it wasn't easy. Naturally, she resented being the ugly one. I had to mention the big sisters, didn't I? Now, because of me, some poor, underprivileged kid is going to be forced to learn how to cook a quiche. Hey, Mary, we got it. Hey, got what? The helicopter. Thanks for the go-ahead, Mary. Smart move. You really took it? I mean, Mary, you really bought it? That was a big decision. Wait a minute, only Mr. Grant can make a decision like that. I... But Lou said you were in charge, and you said get a helicopter. I was in charge? Yeah, didn't you know Lou had to go to the dentist this morning? Gus, I had no idea. You asked me if I agreed that, that we should get a helicopter, and I said, yeah, that was an opinion, not a decision. Look, Mary, the deal's been made. You got yourself a whirly bird. A helicopter? What's Mr. Grant gonna say? I don't know. You want to fly over to his dentist and find out? I really love what you're doing to your new apartment, Mary, but it's funny. The last time I was here, the ceiling seemed higher. <laughs> You 
weren't standing on a chair then. You're probably right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think that's even. Feels even. Thanks, Mary. You're welcome. Anything I can help with before Francine comes? No, no, everything's fine. Except me. To tell you the truth, I'm not quite sure how to act. I've never had a sister. Neither did I. And I was lonely, so I made up an imaginary sister. Dottie. She taught me how to tap dance. <laughs> I wonder what ever happened to her. Francie, this is Georgette Franklin. This is Francie Stevens. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Well, I guess I better be going. Now. Well, no, hey, don't rush off. Oh, thanks, but Ted and I are going to the movies this afternoon, and I have to go home and make the popcorn. Oh. <laughs> well, have fun. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye Francie. <laughs> Hope you didn't have any trouble finding the place. I tried to call to see if you needed a ride. My probation officer dropped me off. Mr. Cooper, very nice man. He's a creep. <laughs> well, how about some lunch? You like hamburgers? No. <laughs> well, can I fix you something else? Okay, I've got tuna fish. Um, ah, chicken salad. And uh, I've got frozen pizza. Got any grass? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got sardines. <laughs> well, we can have lunch later. So, so, you're in high school? Yeah. You like it? Oh, it's better than having a lit cigar stuck up your nose. <laughs> I'll, bet you, I'll bet you were a cheerleader. Still shows, huh? <laughs> Probably dated the football captain. Oh, well, no, he was only the quarterback. Made good grades, too, right? Yeah, uh, I was terrible in math. Yeah, I know your type. Never late, never absent, never getting loaded, never getting busted. A real Susie cream cheese. <laughs> Francie, could I make a suggestion? What? Knock it off. <laughs> Look, I know it may not seem that you and I have a lot in common, you know, but uh, why don't you give it a chance? You might even get to like me. Compared to what? <laughs> a lit cigar up your nose? <laughs> okay, let's give it a try. Okay. Surprise! <laughs> Sister too. And mine's black. <laughs> She's very quick, isn't she? This is Celestine Watkins. Hi, Celestine. I'm Mary Richards, and this is Francie Stevens. Hi, hi. Oh, you girls should have a lot in common. <laughs> She's a delinquent, too. <laughs> and I were just on our way to the movies. Would you care to join us? Well, uh, maybe some other time, Sue Ancy. Uh, Francie and I were just kind of getting to know each other. What a good idea. We'll do that, too. <laughs> Celestine, can I get you something? Oh, no, thanks. I have these. Hey, you want some? Sure, I love red. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, I'm sorry. Would you like some? <laughs> Listen, um, girls, what you do on your own is one thing, you know, but when you're here... I'm afraid I'm going to have to put my foot down. I'm sorry, but uh, I just don't go for that kind of thing. You don't go for Tic Tacs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know. thank you note for letting me hang out here for the last few days. Listen, I'm just sorry I didn't get a chance to spend more time with you, but what with my boss out with a sick tooth and everything, I really have my hands full. Hey, Mayor, did you hear? I won the pool. <laughs> Where's Murray? He'll be back in a few minutes. Hi, Francie. Hi. <laughs> Francie, I've been mean to give you a little advice. Now, just because you've been in trouble, there's no reason to be ashamed. And everybody deserves a second chance, so, so make the most of it. <laughs> Because it may not seem like it now, but there are wonderful years ahead. <laughs> for example, just think, in three or four years, you'll be old enough to date me. <laughs> I'll uh, try and remember that, Mr. Baxter. Good. <laughs> I'll see you tonight at 7.30, right, Mary? Right, see you then. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
Hey, I was just looking at your helicopter, Mary. Gus, will you please not call it my helicopter? Uh, they said they were going to bring it over later this afternoon. Where do you want to keep it? I don't know. Can it just hover? <laughs> hey, Murray. Murray, where's my money? Uh, in my top left-hand drawer, Sam. Was that the camera left or real left? <laughs> left, Ted. It's not here, Murray. What do you mean it's not there? It's got to be there. I just put it in there before lunch. It's not there. Somebody stole my money. Oh, Ted, that's ridiculous. Oh. Oh, I know what you're thinking. Well, you're just wrong. Francie doesn't steal money from desks. She happens to be a shoplifter. <laughs> If you speak French to food, it tries harder. <laughs> Would you like to say something? I don't think so. <laughs> Salad looks bad, though. How can it look bad, Sue Ann? Everything's fresh. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Mary naive out of it, Mary. <laughs> is a hip way of saying good. Everybody knows that. Well, for instance, if I like that outfit, I'd say those threads are bad. Get it? Sure. Sue Ann, your show is really bad. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. That's very sweet of you. <laughs> oh, Celestine and I are having such fun together. Last night we went to a double feature. Shaft and Superfly. <laughs> oh, it was wonderful watching him stick it to the honkies. <laughs> no, it's just too bad that Francie isn't sharing some of her cultural and social upbringing with you. Oh, silly me, but of course she is. She stole Ted's money. <laughs> so, Anne, you don't know that. Well, Mary, just because you blew it with Francie, you don't have to take it out on I me. I didn't blow it with Francie. I'm just... Trying to figure how I'm going to ask her about the money. Well, you don't have to worry about it. I know the perfect way to ease into it. No, Sue Ann, please. It's between Francie and me. I now, really don't... Nonsense, Mary. Let me help you. They always relate better to people closer to their own age. <laughs> Hi, Sue Ann. Hi, Mary. Hi, girls. <laughs> What are we having? Soul food, collard greens, black-eyed peas, and ham hocks. And a Bernays sauce that makes the whole thing palatable. <laughs> Say, I have an idea. While we're having our salad, why don't we play a marvelous game I know? It's called I Confess. Sue so, Ann, I really don't think... The object of the game is to tell something that we've done that we now regret. Who'd like to go first? Celestine. <laughs> well, okay. Um, I lied to you. Well, see, this is just the kind of thing we're after. Now, what was the lie? Well, I lied to you when I said that the kids thought that your show was the hippest thing since Soul Train. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right, dear. I don't mind. We all boogie to a different drummer. <laughs> a big sister. All right, Mary, it's your turn. I don't want to play. Oh, Mary. Come on, just tell something that you did that you now regret. Okay. I bought a helicopter without knowing it. <laughs> that was dumb, Mary. Thank you. Uh, now it's your turn, Sue Ann. All righty. Well, I, I guess it's no secret that I was a child prodigy. I was reading cookbooks at two and started pickling at six. When I was 12, I was quite heavily into sauces. <laughs> By my 13th birthday, I wanted to bake my first walnut cake, but we didn't have any walnuts. So I went down to Mr. Mac's grocery store and I stole a whole bag of them. Oh, the next day I was so ashamed I I went back to confess. 
But it was too late. Mr. Mack had died during the night. <laughs> and I just know it was God's way of punishing me for taking those walls. <laughs> now, Francie, dear, it's your turn. I, I don't want to play. I think it's a stupid game. All right, dear, then why don't we just chat? Francie, did you steal the money out of Marie's desk? No, way. Well, how else are you going to find out? She wouldn't play the game. Francie, I'm sorry about this stupid game. I really am. Look, the thing is, the money was taken out of Murray's desk, and I just, I want you to know that I don't believe that you took her. Mary, I, I mean, sure, sure, a lot of people figure that because a kid's been in trouble once before, she'll be in trouble again, and I just want you to know I set them straight. I mean, what are big sisters for, huh? Mary, I think there's something... Because you I and I said we trust each other, didn't we? And I want you to know that I do trust you, and I'm not going to let anyone accuse you of something you didn't do. Mary, I took the money. Who else? <laughs> Or not. <laughs> no, Ted. Francie gave me the money. Here it is. Yeah, fifty dollars. <laughs> so, she stole it, huh? Yes, Ted. I was right, huh? Yes, Ted, you were right. You were wrong. Yes, Ted, I was wrong. I was right and you were wrong. Yes, Ted, you were right and I was wrong. You were wrong yes, and I was wrong. Yes, Ted, I was wrong and All right, right, all right, Mayor, let's not dwell on it. <laughs> You know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I sit here, I don't make a lot of money, but I see a lot of life passing me by. And some weeks I prefer money. Hi. Hi. More life. Uh, can I speak to you for a minute, Mary? Yeah, sure. Sure, come on, we'll go in here. Okay. Mary, the most wonderful thing just happened. Yeah, great. What? Well, I just stole this outfit. Look. <laughs> Betty, how is that wonderful? Well, I feel really terrible about taking it. I mean, I must be making progress. Dear, we're going to have to have a little talk. Hi, Mr. Grant. Do you remember what I said to you last night? Aren't you going to ask me how I am? How are you, Mr. Grant? Not tops. <laughs> I have you in my chair, a kid in my office, a hole in my gum, and a helicopter in my parking space. <laughs> That's not tops, Mary. Okay, we're going to get out of here uh, right now. No. But, um, but, Mr. Grancy, we have something to talk in about. In front of me. <laughs> yeah, but what, what we have to talk about is uh, kind of... Nobody's going anywhere. <laughs> now, what's going on around here? Uh, Mary, that's okay. I don't mind him knowing I shoplifted this. What, are you crazy, kid? You know what they'll do to you if they catch you? It could ruin your whole life. Now listen to me. You're gonna have to cut this stuff out because... Who is she? Does anybody know her? Yes. <laughs> My little sister from the uh, Big Sisters Association. I guess that's enough. <laughs> now look, you're gonna have to take that outfit back now. You know what now means? It doesn't mean you walk back to that store. You run. Run, run, run! Yeah, well, Mr. Grant, I was just about to tell her that. Now, listen, kid. Nobody had to tell you that. You don't go around telling people you stole something if you didn't expect to have to take it back. I, boy, I, I would never have thought of that. You know, Mr. Grant, you are really impressive. It's the Novocaine. <laughs> Francie, uh, would you like me to go with you when you take it back? No, thanks, Mary. I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to pay my dues. Pay your dues. Good, good, good. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, how hard can it be to take something back, right? Mm -hmm. You just, just walk in and say, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I don't need this. I don't want this. Please take it back. <laughs> good, Mary. Now, just remember that when you take back the helicopter. <laughs> This hole cost me 200 bucks. <laughs> and another 40 for the liquor. It must have been martinis. I think I got an olive stuck in there. That's great. Bye-bye. Oh, what a relief. They took the outfit back. They're not going to press charges, and Francie feels fine. And we have peace in our time. Oh, you know something? This big sister program really works. Of course. It's just like I told him on that promo. The more confused and immature a person is, 
The easier she's influenced by someone else. 